Remember Nina Jankowitz, that theater major who was chosen by the Biden administration to head up the Ministry of Truth, or what they were going to call the Disinformation Governance Board, who then got completely humiliated and resigned? Well, it turns out that she's under investigation by the House Judiciary Committee since we're in control of the House of Representatives now, and it doesn't look like she's being very forthcoming with some documents that they want, and it uh, looks like they may compel her with a subpoena and have her testify in order to get some answers about corruption in the Biden administration. So the House Judiciary Committee just sent her this letter on Wednesday, sounding like a subpoena is coming. <laughs> so... The very next day, she launched a scheme in order to crowdsource and get a bunch of donations from gullible Democrats to pay her legal fees under the disguise, in my opinion, of she's considering launching a lawsuit against Fox News for ruining her life. <laughs> She just launched this GoFundMe page where 152 morons so far paid her a grand total of $8,662 to help Nina hold Fox News accountable for its lies. It's accompanied by a YouTube video from her new YouTube channel, Help Nina Fight Fox News, which has eight subscribers, <laughs> where the comments have been turned off and the ratings disabled, of course. My name is Nina Jankowitz. I'm asking for your financial support of a lawsuit I want to bring against Fox News for their malicious, reckless lies against me. Imagine how bad her case is when she can't get some scumbag lawyer to take it pro bono who will then take a third of the winnings because obviously she has no case. A year ago today, I realized a lifelong dream and entered public service as a U.S. government official. Oh, we're glad you did. <laughs> that was hilarious. Fox News launched overly personalized, false, and incendiary coverage of me, mainstreaming online conspiracy theories to tens of millions of Americans. <laughs> no, you did that all on your own, lady. <laughs> Let me just cut to the chase here on her lengthy explanation of why she wants Democrat suckers to give her money for her supposed lawsuit that she's supposedly planning against Fox News. I have consulted with attorneys who agree there is a case to be brought against Fox, but that it will require more resources than I can afford. What a surprise. That's like going to a butcher and asking him whether or not you should have beef for dinner. Of course you should. What a surprise. You went to an attorney, said that you want to sue somebody who made you mad, and they said, oh, of course we'll take your money and do that for you. Funds I raised here will help me level the playing field in this costly and time-consuming endeavor against Fox News and its army of high-powered corporate lawyers. You know... It's the meme makers who I would be concerned about if I were you, <laughs> because that's where the real power and mockery is coming from. They will also support my other security and legal costs related to Fox News' actions. So here's the rub. Below, please find a list of some of my current costs. So this is maybe for the lawsuit against Fox News, which even if she does file it, will get thrown out immediately, but also to fund for her lawyers to defend her against the House Judiciary Committee now that she appears to be resisting their requests for discovery. This woman is such a whack job that she made the cover of the New York Post with the headline, Scary Poppins, because she was singing songs about... The Russians conspiring with Donald Trump. Remember this? It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. Okay, I'm sorry for subjecting you to that, but you need to understand who it is that we're dealing with here. We're dealing with a self-proclaimed expert on disinformation who claimed with a straight face that it wasn't conservatives being systematically censored on social media. It's liberals. <laughs> There's already this idea, this allegation <clears throat> that there is anti-conservative bias on the platforms, even though there has been study after study proving, in fact, that often it's liberal voices that are being silenced, particularly minority voices um, on social media. So imagine saying with a straight face that it's the black people, black Democrats getting censored from social media. I mean, what's next? Are we going to find out that this woman worked in Ukraine, the hotbed of corruption? where Joe Biden and all of his other cronies got rich? <laughs> oh, wait, what's this? It's an article from The New Yorker. In the summer of 2017, 
Nina Jankowicz, a 28-year-old American, was working in Kyiv as a communication advisor to Ukraine's foreign ministry as part of a year-long Fulbright Fellowship, <laughs> of course. But at least these days, she's registered as a foreign agent. Ukraine is so corrupt. Here's Bill Gates before Russia invaded, and all the globalists put their Ukrainian pins on their lapel. You know, the Ukrainian government is one of the worst in the world. Mm. In, you know, corrupt, controlled by a few rich people. I mean, really uh, unfortunate for the people in Ukraine. Ukraine has better agricultural land than the United States does. I mean, mm. it is the, the breadbasket mm. of Europe. It's an incredible location. I heard they have a lot of natural gas there, too, but that's something we'll have to ask Hunter Biden. But tell us, Nina Jankowicz, what's the official propaganda line for why those color revolutions over the last decade or so in Ukraine? First of all, color revolutions have nothing to do with race. The term was coined in the early 2000s when countries like the Republic of Georgia and Ukraine had spontaneous, peaceful, democratic revolutions that had colorful nicknames. They were spontaneous and peaceful. Our CIA had nothing to do with helping to orchestrate them behind the scenes, especially to overthrow a democratically elected president there who was seen as being too friendly with Russia. <laughs> they would never do that. Before the History Channel became another worthless reality network, they did admit that, well, at least 10 times, I think it's dozens of times, 10 times, they have an article on their website, 10 times America helped overthrow a foreign government. The U.S. has long facilitated regime change to support its own strategic and business interests. Perhaps the most famous case is the 1953 coup where the CIA helped orchestrate the revolution in Iran, which overthrew the democratically elected Mohammad Mossadegh, who wasn't being very friendly in terms of exporting his oil to, I think it was Britain and the United States. So... The CIA just decided to put somebody in there who would do business with us. For the true story of the color revolutions in Ukraine, go and watch Oliver Stone's documentary, Ukraine on Fire, which I'll leave linked up in the description below. It was censored from YouTube shortly after the war started, but there was a lot of publicity about the censorship, and surprisingly, it was restored. And spoiler alert, it turns out that the conspiracy theories about the CIA and Globalist NGOs, non-government organizations, pulling strings behind the scenes were true. So you may enjoy my new Conspiracy Theorists Were Right shirt, which you should order from markdice.com or click the link in the description below. Like all of my designs, it's available on a t-shirt, long sleeve, and a hoodie, and a whole bunch of different colors as well. So head on over to markdice.com or click the link in the description below and check it out.